mean, the in more immediate risk, it depends on the story itself and on the piece of information itself. But if you look at COVID, for instance, and disinformation around the vaccine, mm -hmm. so there, there's an immediate risk in terms of health. The more long-term risk, I think, is just kind of destroying the trust in, in information sources in general. So making it more difficult for factual information to actually be accepted as factual once it's, 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 it's emerged. So we see, for instance, uh, scientific surveys published and people are distrustful of them because it doesn't agree with the kind of... Because they're, they're so overloaded with information that is problematic, that isn't factual, that feeds into their prejudices and feeds into their, their beliefs and confirms their beliefs, that then when they're met with factual information that isn't aligned with that, they're more distrustful of it. Mm -hmm. Now, I think, I, I mean, I think an element of distrust is healthy in general. So I think people should always be a little bit distrustful of everyone and of everything in terms of uh, having a kind of a, a critical voice inside their head saying, let's analyze whether this statement is true or not. I think that's healthy. But I think you also have to have a little bit of trust in, in reputable organizations that have certain standards of reporting, certain standards of, of, um, of, of, of reporting, really. Uh, so I think the, the more long-term risk of misinformation is just this breakdown of, of kind of public trust in one another, mm -hmm. kind of. And I think all the misinformation leads to general corrosion of, of, of trust, I guess.